What is going on YouTube? This is Vice speaking and welcome back to some more Octopath Traveler, man. In the last episode, we began Ophelia's Chapter 2 story. We made our way to Saints Bridge, where everything having to do with the right went perfectly fine. However, we got wrapped up in this dilemma between this boy and his friends. He lost a brooch. Some dog bit onto it and ran into this forest, which nobody is allowed in. So it's not looking very good, but we are in fact here to save the day. So with that, man, we can see him in the background right there. We've got a job to do. Let's do it. Hmm. Where'd that dog go? And how far in here am I? Hmm. I have to find that brooch. Emil! I, I'm sorry. I haven't found it yet. Please, just give me a little more... You idiot! What are you talking about? We've got to get out of here. But... But the dog... Are you Forget serious? about the stupid dog. But... <gasps> D did you hear that? Emil! Run for it, Emil. Stay back! D daryl There's no time for rest! Over here! Oh! Sister Ophelia? Such a relief! Thank heavens I arrived in time! Now get behind me, both of you! R right! You mustn't push yourself. Don't worry, everything's alright. You two are very brave. Now, if only we could be on our way. I will not lose to you. And here he is. Ruth Vindir, whatever the heck his name is, I've never known how to pronounce that. And I don't think I ever will. Now, to start off, what do I want to do? I'm going to start by analyzing just to make our job a little bit easier. Beautiful electric weakness that I'm, I can't wait to exploit. Um, I am going to have, can we collect from it? We can, beautiful, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm gonna donate BP to Cyrus to start. Lucky for us, we've got Ulbrich in this party. And we really haven't even gotten a chance to use him yet with his absolutely broken set of skills, man. I cannot wait. Um, I guess to start out, let me go for a true strike and just see. 756 on a non-broken enemy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Give me a peacock strike on Cyrus. Oh, he's taking two turns per, per uh, turn. Ah, okay. Eye for an eye. Didn't think I had that on Ophelia, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, Wait, I don't recall using a BP. Did I accidentally hit R when I used that true strike? I must have. That's actually really strange. Um, Reduce physical attack. That would actually be useful. To reduce his physical attack, yeah. I'll do my best. Ophelia, gonna have you lion dance, Oberic. I'm excited for this one, man. We're we're gonna be doing lots of setup and lots of explosive, explosive moves. Oh, that's low damage. Cyrus isn't used to hitting that low. But for right now, it's about the shields. So he didn't have a bow weakness. Let's test for the sword weakness. And there it is. Ooh. 
Um, in fact, we can end all the confusion right here by using one DP. Spears and ice. Beautiful. That bodes well for Ulbrich. He can... Do we want to do it in, on this turn? I'm uh, thinking about if I want to or not. I think I will. Give me a thousand spears. Look at the damage, guys! Look at Ulbrich's damage! Yeah! Uh, I'm gonna have Tressa donate 2 BP to Ulbrich. We're preparing for the next turn. I'm gonna have Ophelia renew Cyrus's Peacock Strut because on the next turn we are going nuts. It's time. Now, the issue is though, what move do we go for? We know he has a spear weakness and a sword weakness. But I believe Ulbrich's strongest weapons are actually his spear and his axe. And I don't have a single attacking spear move that hits as hard as my other crazy moves. Spearhead doesn't necessarily hit harder. Um, man, so this is a tough one for me. I might just cross strike because that's the weakness that we know he has. Let's do it. With boosted physical attack, 58, 21. Oh boy, okay. Uh, dang it, so we only have the rest of this turn. 66% um, chance, but I can save the collection. I should be able to at least. Any thief skills I want to try out? Anything? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, do I want to put BP into this though? I'm trying to think. Think strategies, think strategies. Give me a tree. 719, not bad. Here it is. Here it is, Cyrus. Here it freaking is. What about Blizzard or Lightning Blast? I like Lightning. Let's do that. Not bad at all, man. Oh my gosh. And then Ophelia. He also happens to have a light weakness, which is really convenient for Ophelia. Hit with the Holy Light, he's already on yellow health. We're doing good. We are doing good, good. Oh, boy. That is not what we wanted to see. Um, In that case, I like... Oh, what? Wait a minute. Where the heck did all of Ulbrich's SP go? What the heck? Um, I was going to do a thousand spears to... Uh... Well, let's think about this. Yeah, I was gonna try and take as many shields as possible. What I'm actually gonna do, though, is have him spearhead so he can go first on the next turn. I was going to have Ulbrich restore his own SP, but I want somebody else to do it. Um, Cyrus can hit with a lightning blast. Which is going after those shields. I want Tressa to use a medium pomegranate on Cyrus. I don't want to forget to collect though. I really don't. Um, oh, dang it. Oh, uh, Tressa could have shared SP, but I don't mind using a plum. I guess I, I must have just went through the SP by using Cross Strike and the Thousand Spears. I forgot I used a bunch of skills in a row, so it is what it is. It is what it is if I could speak proper English for once in my life. Um, give me another Thousand Spears. Dang it, his um, physical attack stat is not raised anymore. Oh, he's taking three turns this turn and the next. I am absolutely going to break him. He's still on yellow, so we're we're good. We're not in a bad place. Ooh, do I do B three BP right now, or do I save it for the no? Nah, because I can kill him on the next turn if I save it. I can do one BP for. Uh, no, I'm gonna actually save it still. No rush, no rush. He's absolutely done for on the next turn, so I can have. What is one BP gonna give me with a collect eighty five? I'm going to go for it, but if I fail this, I'm going to be infuriated. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. 4,000 leaves. And an incidental. Just for good measure. I love that from you, Tressa. What do we want to do here? Cyrus's elemental attack is going to need to be boosted back up. So I guess I'll do a peacock on Cyrus. And then we can all go crazy on the next turn. And we should be good here coming up. Um, you can try a steal just for the heck of it. Healing great bunch. That's good. That is really good. Oh, I love incidental attacks so much. Here it is. Uh, Blizzard this time. And he's hanging on. Not many people can take a Blizzard from Cyrus like that. It's Ophelia's turn. Holy Light. Oh, boy. Oh, this is going to come down to Ulbrich. I'm nervous. What move should I use, though? I'm not sure. His strongest weapons are his spear and his axe, currently. Do I go for 1,000 spears? Usually I use it to break enemies. I don't really use it to do damage. But Ulbrich's physical attack is so through the roof. Guys, do I go for it? I'm actually feeling kind of risky. Let's do it. Wow, he only needed one. He only needed one, and just like that, Hrafnurde is defeated. Oh my goodness. Oh, you, you saved our lives. Wow. Oh, that was Dara. You kicked its butt. <laughs> okay, now everything's all right. Good riddance to scary monsters. Oh, y you said it. Come on, come on, Emil. Let's go back home. But hang on. If you'll just give me a little bit more time. You idiot! What? More time to get killed? You think that was the only monster in here? Oh. But I. Ah. See? I knew I'd find it. Emil. Emil, you... Such a relief. Nice going, Emil. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Now then. I knew you had it in you. Now, let's get out of here. Oh, well, I would say that went beautifully. Emil, I think that Daryl has something he wants to say. Huh? He does? <laughs> Daryl? Hmm. Emil, I... I shouldn't have said any of those things I said. I'm sorry. Sorry for being so mean to you. Daryl? When my mom died... It seems so unfair. I I think I was just trying to make you hurt too. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry, Emil. I'm so so sorry. Oh It's okay. I knew you were sad and I couldn't do anything to make you feel better either. With a beautiful violin in the background. Yada. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. No one else can hurt you quite like a friend can. But you understand each other now. And that's what counts. Now play nice, you hear? I'm sorry. <laughs> I really am sorry, Emil. No. It's alright. Besides, you saved my life. If you hadn't jumped in the way, that beast would have eaten me alive. Emil. Emil. <laughs> All right, boys. Save it until we're back in town. Come along. Beautiful man.
beautiful. Just a perfect conclusion. So awesome. Yeah, I am voice cracking. 26,000 leaf. Oh, that feels so good to see. Lately, I've had not a lot of leaf at all. I've been uh, struggling just a bit. Um, after that grinding session, man, I was... I think I was spoiled on it because I had so much leaf. And I was like, I man, this is the life. But now, you know, we got to work our way back up. Anyways, Ophelia has returned. Welcome back, Sister Ophelia. And how did you find our humble town? It is a fine place, Your Excellency, with fine children who will surely lead it to a bright future. <laughs> children, you say? Yes. I am not sure of what you speak, but it seems you had a pleasant encounter in Saintsbridge today. Your smile beams as bright as the flame. See, but why does he say that as if he is completely ignorant to the fact that there are kids in this town? I know what they're trying to say. Uh, I don't know what you mean by the children being good people. But, like, he sounds like he doesn't know that there are children at all. Like, come on, Bartolo. Come on now. Mighty Elfric brought fire down from the heavens and carried it to every corner of the realm. Every 20 years, one of our faithful sets off on the kindling, following in his footsteps. It is said that the ember born during the rite reflects the heart of the flame bearer who carries it. The heart of the flame bearer? Twenty years ago, when the Archbishop brought us his ember, I recall that his flame burnt bright and strong, full of vigor and passion. The fire that you have brought us, Sister Ophelia, to my eyes, it looks to be a warm and gentle flame. I know not which children you met, but I have no doubt your kindness was a comfort to them as well. You are far too kind, Your Excellency. I only hope that I have helped in some small way. Hey, Emil, did you find that brooch? I sure did. We found it in the woods. The woods? You actually went in? But there are all kinds of nasty beasts in there. You bet there were, but that sister from the church kicked the living snot out of them. It was freaking outrageous, wasn't it, Emil? It sure was. Living snot, huh? I love that line so much. <gasps> sister! It's true, though, isn't it? Oh, I wish I could have seen it, too. The beast? No, sister here beating it into a bloody pulp. Now, just a second. Anyway, sister Ophelia's freaking outrageous, isn't she, Emil? She really is. Oh, why do you two get to have all the fun? You better tell me all about it. <laughs> I do believe my work here is done. And with that, I should journey on to Goldshore. Sister Ophelia leaves Saintsbridge behind, her journey far from over, with one last prayer to the sacred flame of this land, that it might bring happiness to the children living here. She embarks for Goldshore, a town in the coastlands. There, the second church awaits her on her journey. And there we have it, guys. I think a beautiful conclusion to a beautiful little saga. Let's hear the banter. <laughs> Children can take you by surprise. We oft forget what they are capable of. <laughs> it sounds like you're speaking from personal experience. There's a young lad back in my village. 
I was teaching him the sword. Are you worried for him? Nay. T'would be a lie to say I do not think of him from time to time, but I do not worry. I taught him what I could of the sword and other things besides. He took the lessons well. I have faith in the lad. I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. How so? Well, it's a belief of mine that every child should have a mentor to take them in hand and show them what is right and wrong. And I concur. Oh man, that's awesome. Just a little reminder how expansive all these characters' lives are and, you know, where they all come from. They all got people back in their hometowns that they need to be thinking about. Anyways, I guess we have a decision to make. Usually I would start the episode in the place that I was going to do the next story, but because of how the last episode went, we have time left in both episodes, including this one. The recording's only at 21 minutes, and I'm sure I'm going to be cutting out. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm probably not going to be cutting out a ton, but um, I've been going in order of level, and I don't plan to change that, so we would probably do... I'm trying to think. It'd be Cyrus, right? Yeah, because he's level 24 in Quarry Crest. We've been there before, haven't we? Yeah, I forgot. Man, that works out perfectly. Man, but this is going to mess up the order if we start it during this episode. I had a nice little order going on, you know, with two episodes per person. It just, it might be jacked up a little bit if I do this, but I, I, I think I'm fine. Let's just do it. Uh, so I guess we would head... I feel like I can complete this guy's quest. Yeah. I have been doing quests off screen, as I think I told you guys once before. Um, I just find it easier, and it, it... I don't know, I just like it. It gives me something, something to do when I am not recording. Because obviously, you know, the part that sucks about doing a playthrough is I can't play the game and enjoy it, you know, in my pastime because I have to show everything I do, at least pertaining to the main story, on screen. So the quests are just a tiny little way for me to get to enjoy this game, you know, when I'm just on my own, not recording. So I'm very grateful that I get to do that. If I was even, oh, and this is why I love quests so much. 6,500 leaf. Oh, that's so much money. That is so much money. I'm up to 33,000 now. We are really working our way back. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm just grateful for the time that I get to do side quests. And I recommend you guys do as many as you possibly can. If you saw that reward, I, I'm sure you're incentivized now. I mean, boy, oh boy. All right, so we're going to speak to this guy here. And let's hear a tale. Cyrus, Chapter 2. Let's go. The story so far. Cyrus left the academy behind in search of the lost tome from the far reaches of hell. Its disappearance was a riddle wrapped in mystery, a riddle that piqued his scholarly curiosity. Even suffering the indignity of losing his post was a small price to pay for the opportunity of solving this fascinating puzzle. And so did Cyrus come to Quarry Crest to call upon an old colleague who just might have the answers he seeks. So this is Quarry Crest. It's hard to believe it's been 10 whole years since Odette left the academy. And her house was... Ah, oh, that's right. She left directions in her letter. I should take another look. You have all the markings of a great scholar, Cyrus. But allow me to offer you a word of warning. For all your intellect, you have always been clumsy in matters of heart. I know that your research is more important to you than anything. But you would do well to give some thought to how you treat the fairer sex. The fairer sex? Oh, okay, I guess, whatever. You are more handsome than you give yourself credit for. Bro, Cyrus is dashing. Even that little, uh, that college girl before had a crush on him. Except she was just too scared to say anything. 
If you're not careful, you might find your words and actions... Uh, how should I say? Misconstrued by those around you. I should have known better than to read that again. The first time I read it, I nearly fell over laughing. Now it seems almost prophetic. To think I'd be banished from the academy because of a trumped up scandal like that. I can just see Odette laughing at me the moment I mention it. Now then. But there's no point worrying. I have to face her sooner or later, after all. I try to keep myself presentable, this is true. But is my face truly so easy on the eyes? Oh, woe is me, doomed never to realize the full depth of my good looks and charisma. Cyrus is just so charming, oh, I love him so much. Ooh, look at the bro! Bro, Cyrus really is a lady killer. Those girls, they didn't even say anything and you could tell they were digging him. If you'll forgive me. Professor, may I ask what that letter was about? It seemed almost engrossing. Oh, that. It was a message warning me about women. Huh? Oh, I don't mean in a bad way. What it actually said was that I should be careful how I act towards women. Lest I give cause for misunderstandings. Well, intelligence such as yours can be very attractive. Oh my gosh, even Ophelia's digging up. Uh, I gotta contain myself. Because sometimes I start thinking and then I start shipping. And then it's, it, it just all goes downhill from there, man. Oh my gosh. Please, my dear. A word such as attractive must be kept in reserve for those of great beauty. Such as yourself. I mean, come on. Even... And he's not even trying right now. He, the, bro, the thing about Cyrus, that line was not even him trying to spit game. He was literally just being himself. Bro, the guy is a natural charmer. I wish I had as much game as Cyrus. Oh my gosh. Uh, hmm? I think maybe that's the kind of thing the letter writer was talking about. You think so? But I was merely speaking my mind. Am I not allowed to tell a beautiful woman that she is just that? Well, sometimes you can, but maybe in your case you shouldn't. <laughs> I am finding this most difficult to understand. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with that, guys. I'm so in love with that. Also, I do have to apologize in advance. My accents are horrible. And although Cyrus is my favorite character, I, I don't do him much justice <laughs> by um, voicing him, so I'm sorry if it's cringy to listen to. I'm doing my best, though. Oh my gosh, can you hey, imagine man. Ophelia and Here Cyrus? They'd be the cutest couple! Oh my gosh! Anyhow, here we are. It's been some time, Odette. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what the heck? You're still here. I guess I'm not suffering from fatigue-induced hallucinations after all. It's me, Odette, in the flesh. Good to see you as hale and hearty as ever. I mean, how can you not love this man? He's just so pure and happy. He's so happy to see her, even though she sent the letter. Bro, he's just such a good guy, Cyrus is. So pure and genuine. And you're as insufferable as ever, no doubt. What are you waiting for? Come in already. Don't mind if I do. Can I let you guys in on a little secret? <laughs> Whenever that song is playing, that um that boulder fall theme that was just playing before this song, I'm 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 constantly dancing in my chair, but obviously you can't see it. 
maybe you'll get to enjoy these sort of things once I <laughs> once I get a, a, a camera or a, something to record so I can have like you know the um, what do they call it face reveal I don't know but yeah just thought you guys might have you know I'm sitting here bopping man how did I know that would be your reaction We were practically joined at the hip back in the day. Just watching you go about was fun in and of itself. I always had a hunch you'd end up in trouble with the ladies, but to think it would happen with the princess of all people. Hey, okay, come on now. That was entirely her fault. She literally instigated everything. Cyrus didn't do a dang thing. All he did was exist. And she brought that upon him. So before you go blaming me, you might want to have a conversation with a princess because, <laughs> hey, clearly she was digging my boy, you know, and I'm trying to shake. Okay. Okay, I'll leave you guys alone. <laughs> Somehow, you've managed to exceed even my wildest expectations. By expelling me, they hope to protect Her Highness's good name. Needless to say, there's no truth in any of this. I love his voice so much. Oh, of course, of course. I'm sure it's all as you say. It is. Her Highness and this Therese are just your pupils. They have no romantic interest in you in the slightest. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I was ranting before I was referring to Therese, not the princess. I know I said the princess. I got confused. You're something else, Cyrus. But it's a relief to find your powers of observation are as keen as ever. Uh -huh. Well, did you come all this way just to entertain me? If so, congratulations on a job well done. Save your congratulations for another time. I've come in search of a certain tome. Are you perchance familiar with From the Far Reaches of Hell? A cheery title if I've ever heard one. I can tell you that it's a compendium of ancient rites and rituals. Not that I've read it myself, of course. I know that much. I was hoping you could tell me more. Not much more. It touches upon necromancy, I believe. Necromancy? Necromancy. That said, as to what extent, I know little. Is that so? Well, I was sure that if anyone could enlighten me, it would be you. Give me a break. Is that supposed to be flattery? Alright, just give me some time. As soon as I tackle the little pickle I'm dealing with at the moment, I'll do some investigating. A hole? A pickle, you say? Consider my interest piqued. I always took you for the type who chewed up and spit out your problems before pickles they could become. Again, I find your flattery lacking. Anyhow, since you're here, perhaps I can put you to use. As it happens, a number of people have gone missing of late. Oh. Under suspicious circumstances, I presume. Naturally. Just so. Many quite literally seem to have been spirited away. One soul went to the neighborhood provisioner to buy some foodstuffs and never returned. Another turned the street corner only to vanish entirely, leaving his friend who was strolling with him in disbelief. All told, ten men and women have gone missing in such a fashion in the past half year. Most intriguing. How curious indeed. <sighs> Don't look so disappointed, you nutjob. So how about it? Do you have any ideas? Hmm. 
it would be imprudent to jump to conclusions without conducting an investigate. Great. Thanks. Knew I could count on you. I will get to that tome while you're away. As you wish. A fair trade, I'd say. Though I dare say that having the opportunity to solve this peculiar puzzle is a reward in itself. I see. It figures. Well, happy investigating. First, I should ask Odette where precisely the kidnappings have occurred. Well, I guess we'll just have to scrutinize her now, won't we? Curious, aren't you? So, Professor, think you can solve the puzzle? Oh, definitely. I am very much looking forward to the challenge. <laughs> Your enthusiasm certainly is charming, but don't you find the scholarly life to be... exhausting sometimes? You must forgive me, but I don't see how it possibly could be. Well, you lot can never let a mystery just be. You need to figure everything out. You realize there's no end to it, that you'll never find all the answers. Life is too short to spend it with a furrowed brow and a nose forever stuck in a tome. Ah, oh, clearly you are not a fan of natural philosophy. Still, I enjoy your refreshing frankness. There's a certain beauty to your honesty. Steady, Professor. Are you trying to sweet-talk me? What do you mean? I honestly can't tell if he's genuinely guileless or just play-acting. See? See? I start thinking and I start shipping Cyrus with every female character and then it all goes downhill! Oh my gosh, but when you start flirting, man, and you bring Primrose into it, oh gosh. Come on now, you're killing me. Okay, testimony. Come to think of it, the three people who went missing were all last seen near the inn. It could well be a coincidence, but I highly doubt it. Uh, so let's check that out. Have been seen walking near the inn. Well, hello, old man. What say you? A system of underground canals runs all throughout this town. I don't think anyone has ventured down there in quite some time, though. The sewers. Oh, there's an entrance to the sewers behind the inn. Okay, things are starting to pick up now. Seen it happen both in the dead of night and broad daylight. Someone's walking by the inn. They turned the corner up ahead, and when I followed, they were gone. Vanished in the thin air. Now then. And with that, I do believe I have all the knowledge I need to crack the case. Where did the disappearances occur? Well, I dare say they occurred near the inn. Hmm. Every victim was in the general vicinity of the inn when they disappeared. We can say with absolute certainty that they did not vanish into the air, or some such nonsense. When did the disappearances occur? At all hours, that's from that final testimony. As such, it stands to reason that they were kidnapped. and that the kidnapper made use of a hidden path or passage to evade the public eye. What route did the kidnapper employ so as not to draw attention? That would be the sewers. And would you looky there, the entrance to the sewers would, be, would seem to make for an ideal escape route. Yes, doubtless the culprit stole underground to spirit his victims away. Thusly, I do believe I should have a look down there for myself. All right, one last banter, let's see. 
Professor? Hello, Professor. Ah, oh, hello, Tressa. Why are you shouting? I was trying to offer you some sweets, but you weren't answering me. Oh, I do apologize. Once I get to thinking about a thing, I often become lost to the world. There was a time when I was so engrossed in a book, I failed to notice that my neighbor's house was on fire. Wow, being able to concentrate like that must be super handy as a scholar. But it's probably best to be a little more attentive, especially when on the road like we are. You never know what's waiting around the next corner. Quite true, Tressa, quite true. I shall endeavor to be more vigilant. She praises my focus, but it's nothing compared to hers when she's in the midst of a business negotiation. He's not wrong. Anyways, guys, I should have ended the episode before I went scrutinizing people, and I, I completely forgot. I made a note in my head, and I just forgot about it. So now recording's at 41 minutes. Uh, it's going to be another long one. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I have to wrap it up here. So if you guys did enjoy, you can always give it a like, man. If you did not, you can dislike and tell me what I can do to improve these episodes in the comments. With all that said, guys, I have been Vice, and this has been Octopath Traveler, man. I'm going to let that out to do its thing, and I will catch you guys in the next one, all right? I'm out of here.